What's up, YouTube? It's Jermaine with another video. And in this video, I'm just gonna really um, just talk about, you know, life in San Francisco. I'm gonna talk about, you know, the housing, the whole, the tech dilemma that's going on. So uh, off we go. So guys, as you guys may notice now, San Francisco was very, very expensive. Um, in Soma, the neighborhood, pretty much the neighborhood where I'm filming in this intersection, the average one bedroom now is going for like $4,000. Now, you're talking about a one bedroom apartment. And $4,000 is a lot of money. Um, usually you need to make three times the amount of the rent to move in. So if you make $100,000 a year, like you still can't afford a $4,000 a month in apartment. So what's really going on? Like this is sort of getting out of hand because I remember in 2007, I would you know look online and just check to see how much a one bedroom would cost in San Francisco. And man, you could get a one bedroom for like a thousand bucks. And now you mean to tell me like the average is 4,000? It just don't really make sense. So what's really happened? Well, during 1997, well, not 1997, I meant 2007, 2008, during the financial crisis, you know, the country was, um, was pretty much going through this whole financial crisis. Well, San Francisco wasn't really going through a crisis. Um, it was sort of a, a boom happening right as the financial crisis you know, was going on. Uh, tech was starting to, you know, get bigger, you know, around 2008. And companies like Google and Apple were hiring more employees. Um, and this led to more people moving to Silicon Valley. Um, more people moving to areas like Redwood City, Cupertino. I can't say it, gosh. <laughs> Cupertino. Um, Burlingame, San Jose, like all the peninsula, all up and down the peninsula, people are just starting to like move here. And it's getting expensive. Well, it's also kind of boring living down there. Like on the weekends, not that it's boring. I don't mean to talk about the peninsula, but it's not like living in the city. It's not like you can walk down the street and there's a ton of action and there's events going on. No, it's like you pretty much, you know, everyone has a backyard a front yard, you have to drive everywhere. So a lot of young people wanted to live in the city. And so that happened. More people started to move to the city. Okay. Now a lot of people were still looking, you know, in the peninsula because if you live in the pen peninsula, you're closer to work. Well, over time, you know, a couple of years go by, I want to say 2007 through 2008, Google and Apple are like hiring more employees in this whole area of San Francisco is becoming more populated. And then all of a sudden, Google and Apple started to put buses on the roads. Buses to pick up employees that lived in the city and drop them off at the campus, you know, the Apple campus or the Google campus. And it wasn't just Apple and Google. I'm not trying to pick on Apple and Google. A lot of companies have buses. Okay. So pretty much what that has caused in the city is like pretty much every one bedroom apartment now is increasing in price by the day because more people are moving like to the Bay Area a lot of them are working in the peninsula. Peninsula. A lot of them don't want to live in the peninsula. They want to live in the city where the action is. More people are moving to the city. And then that's when the tables really start to turn. People from the peninsula who is already living in the peninsula say, hey, we want to move to the city too. And within the matter of like two years, it just, everything just blew up in the city. Like every vacant apartment was just gone. You know, and then all of a sudden prices are starting to go up, you know. You don't see any more apartments for a thousand dollars anymore. Man, they're all two thousand. You know, twenty five hundred. And twenty five hundred 
was a cheap apartment a couple uh, like two years ago that was a cheap apartment now it's like a cheap apartment is like thirty three hundred dollars is a cheap apartment i mean it's just getting out of hand and the weird thing about it is there are more and more people living in san francisco today like in 2015 than there were in 2007 but now I'm starting to see more and more vacancies everywhere, like all over the city, like just more and more vacancies. Like, so as you guys may have discovered, we have a housing crisis. We need more housing. But on the other hand, there's vacancies. What vacancies am I talking about? Well, right now in the city, there are construction projects going up everywhere. Okay, and uh, most of these places now have the first floor dedicated dedicated to retail space. Okay, that makes sense. And then you know people live above. Well, the upstairs are renting. Okay, you look at a majority of these buildings, the upstairs is already rented. However, the downstairs, the first floor unit, is not being rented. I was driving the other day in the city, and I counted about ten buildings that have been opened more than two years yet but there's nothing open downstairs there's people living upstairs but there's no business downstairs now why is there no business downstairs okay now it it may take a minute to wrap your head around this one but remember that san francisco is in a tech boom okay so you have a lot of techies moving here you have a lot of techies living here On the other hand, let's talk about tech companies, okay? A lot of tech companies, majority of tech companies, they pretty much want their employees to stay there all day. So they provide things like breakfast, lunch, dinner. Um, You know, some tech companies have gym memberships. Some have, um, well, not gym memberships, but they may have a gym like on campus, like Google, like Apple. Um, you know, basically they want to, I don't know, have the workers like working hard all the time. So they give you all these amenities to keep you at work, you know, ping pong table, pool table, all sorts of, all sorts of stuff to keep you at work. But the deal is if you work for a tech company, you don't have to spend money really outside of the economy. Okay. And what I'm talking about is I'm talking about this. I know a lot of people that work for tech companies, they get their Uber rides come to work, okay? So they wake up, they go to work, that's free. They get to work, they have breakfast, lunch, dinner, that's free. A lot of tech companies have alcohol there, so when you're done working, you can drink at work, okay? Now you're not working, but yet you can hang out and drink. You don't have to go to some dirty bar, wait in line, tip the bartender, you know, take an Uber all the way there, take an Uber back. No, you can just hang out at work with all the other people that you work with. And pretty much, that kind of sounds like, that sounds pretty dope for the tech worker because you can save so much of your income because now your food's taken care of, you know, your alcohol's taken care of, your ride to work is taken care of. I mean, a lot of tech workers can have, they can see 50% savings rate easily because they're not really spending money in the economy like someone else who doesn't work in tech. For example, I was making this comparison. You know, a tech worker who makes $80,000 working for a tech company versus a muni bus driver who makes $80,000. At the end of the year, who do you think would save more money? Obviously, the tech worker. Because the muni worker probably won't get the free food, probably won't get all the perks. He's going to have to use his money that he was already taxed on to go buy food. And he was already taxed on to go buy a gym membership and and perks like that. However, tech workers, you know, they can just pretty much save all their money. Not necessarily all of their money, but they can save just so much more of their money. And they can spend more money on things like bottle service that costs a thousand dollars you know or you know fancy dinners all the time that cost several hundred dollars 
So they can pretty much spend their money like in different ways, but one drawback I see is you know, it's actually hurting businesses in the city. I mean, for example, Uber and Square and Twitter, they're all in the same area in the city. And there's like a few businesses around there, like there's a McDonald's, there's a Starbucks. Well, one of the McDonald's is closing and you probably have figured out why it's closing. Because a lot of these tech workers that work for Twitter and um, Square and as well as Google, they don't have to leave the office and go downstairs and spend $8 on a burger and fries and a drink because they're just getting it free at their office. Meaning that, you know, it's less like they're not stimulating the economy the same way. Like before Uber and Square and Twitter moved into those buildings that they are in now, other businesses were in those buildings. Okay. And other businesses may not have had the same perks. Meaning that, you know, if you have a McDonald's or if you have a Starbucks or if you have a little donut shop and you, it was near those buildings, you probably made more money versus now. Because now you have tech workers that they, they just pretty much don't support the economy the same way. And I'm not saying that this is a bad thing because they're obviously buying things that they probably wouldn't be buying anyway. But it, it's sort of, it's not good for the community because it literally makes prices higher for everyone, you know? Like the average meal in San Francisco, I would say is about $10 for, you know, a burger, fries, and a drink. And there are far less places to shop, you know, for cheap food in the city or for food in general. You take a city like New York for $10, oh man, like... You have a lot of options for five dollars. You have a lot of options for five dollars in San Francisco. Like, I don't really, I can't really tell you a place off the top of my head that you can go and eat something decent for five bucks. All right, guys. So, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. I'm going to call this um, these videos the San Francisco series, so look for the playlist. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Peace.